Hello, everybody. How's it going? Dishnet34, Rob Tomlinson here, welcoming you to today's episode of This Week in Perfect Team, episode number 222 for the fifth set of Tops cards. Welcome in, everybody. Oh, boy. What a week. What a week it has been so far. It is great to see y'all back here again. Oh, man. Oh, man. Great, great to be here once again for another episode of This Week in Perfect Team. We have a, we have a lot of stuff to cover today. I mean, we have this top set here. We have PTC Yes information coming up. Can you believe it's already PTC Yes time again next Saturday? Can you believe that? I, I, I don't believe that either. That That's absolutely insane. How quickly, you know, things can turn around like that. It's absolutely insane. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Hopefully, you're all having a great week so far. I know that uh, I've kind of had an interesting week. I'm just getting over a cold, so if I sound a little bit different, uh, please bear with me. Trying to keep my voice, uh, you know, intact for the week. I think I might have overdid it a little on Sunday with the uh, World Series stream. So, And sometimes that just leads to me getting a cold for some reason. It's weird. It's weird. I can, like, directly attribute it. To, to me overdoing my voice on Sunday. It's weird. It's weird how that works. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. And speaking of some uh, very cool championship stuff that happened over the weekend, congratulations once again to our Perfect Team World Championship Qualifiers. That's right. We finalized the list of PTWC qualifiers. We have the Midgar Materia owned by Lydora, who has the most perfect league titles with three of them. We have the Brooklyn Cyclones owned by Bonkers 25. They have two perfect league titles and 1,160 wins in perfect league. We have the Kamaraska Sportagy owned by Sipami, the perfect team master series, perfect draft tournament champion, and the Attorney of Skeletors owned by Ricky Vaughn, the PTMS traditional tourney champ. Congratulations to all four. We will be reaching out to you sometime in the next few days to uh, to get things coordinated for the Perfect Team World Championships, which are coming up soon. We're going to be announcing those. We're going to be announcing that in the very near future. All right. If you weren't around here just before the stream, about an hour or so ago, we released two new cards that are in packs right now. These Adam Wainwright cards, 80 overall, 2006 rookie sensation Adam Wainwright, and a peak 100 overall Adam Wainwright, both from the St. Louis Cardinals. Kind of celebrating his 200th win and, and his impending retirement. <clears throat> So pretty interesting stuff right there. It's not a tiger. It's not a tiger. I know. Shocking, right? Even though Adam Wainwright did kind of carve up the tigers in the 2006 World Series. But that's beside the point. That is besides the point. He's trying to get in that bat this weekend too? Really? Wow, that's, that's interesting. <laughs> but you know, this is some sweet card art. I do have some issue with the 2006 card art, but that's beside the point. But these two pa these two cards right here, they are in packs right now and will be in packs for the rest of the game. Pretty cool stuff right there. All right, folks. Now, speaking of cards that are in packs, let's talk about some updates on the limited edition cards that are currently in packs. We have these three limited edition cards that are left in packs the last ozzy smith did get pulled this morning so all of the ozzy smiths are gone so all 100 of the ozzy smiths have been accounted for so right now in packs we have the 86 overall gary gaietti as of about an hour ago there were 38 still left in there we have 62 out of 100 that have been pulled mike kruko Four out of 25 of them have been pulled from packs. 90 overall righty there. And then the one that we released, I believe a couple of days ago, actually yesterday, 
Hoyt Wilhelm. None have been pulled right now. The 100 overall reliever from the San Francisco Giants. So, a little bit of an update for y'all right there on the limited edition cards that are still in packs right now. Alrighty, for those of you, for those of you who have been, uh, for those of you who are into tournaments, we have a tournament refresh coming. We have a lot of uh, tournaments that are being refreshed. There is a link on the forums right now that will show you what we have going on with those tournament updates, which are coming up this Monday, October 2nd. So if you want to take a look at that, link is in the chat right now to take a look at that. There's a lot of stuff that's going to be either changed around, added in, removed. So definitely take a look at that list. It'll be uh, coming up this Monday. This Monday. Turn and refresh. Gotta love it. And speaking of tournaments, speaking of tournaments, the Perfect Team Championship Series number six is next Saturday. That's right. Can you believe it's all already here? I mean, we literally just had the PTMS, but now another PTCS coming up. Absolutely incredible. Sixth Perfect Team Championship Series is going to happen on Saturday October 7th, beginning at noon Eastern, with finals coverage on our Out of the Park Developments Twitch channel. Now, the top 128 teams from this PTCS period, from September 4th through October 1st, in each of the 10 eligible formats, will be participating in the PTCS. Players are going to get points based on how they finish in the PTCS, and the top 64 teams in PTCS, well, beyond, well, combined in the next five PTCSs, starting with this one, will go to the second Perfect Team Master Series. And there will be separate Perfect Team Master Series for regular tournaments and perfect drafts like usual. First place through 32nd place in each PTCS will get a brand new PTCS exclusive card, depending on how they finish. And just like we did, in the Perfect Team Master Series, if you finish higher, if you finish high enough, you will also get all the cards below your finish as well. So if you get first place, you're getting the 17th through 32nd place reward. You're getting the 9th through 16th place reward, the 5th through 8th reward, the 3rd and 4th reward, and the 2nd place reward, as well as your championship reward. So some pretty cool stuff right there. Now... In terms of the formats, here's what we have going on for this next PTCS. All formats will have a 2003 run environment with a designated hitter, and games are going to be played at the 1985 Wrigley Field in Chicago. So some very fun stuff right there. Going to go with an OTP era formats for a lot of these tournaments. We have an Iron Open, Bronze Open, Silver Open, Gold Open, Diamond Open, and, well, Open for each of the Iron Through Open tournaments here. Wild Card is going to be an OOTP era 1650 cap. So that's a, that's a, pretty, that's a pretty low cap right there for the Wild Card. Can't wait to see what kind of rosters are going to come out for that one. As far as weekly tournaments go, it will be the OOTP era gold floor diamond ceiling with a 22-10 cap. Interesting, interesting stuff. And for the perfect draft daily, we're going to have an OOTP era orderly draft with, uh, with a designated hitter and limited editions will be available to be chosen from in the draft. So some fun stuff right there. For these tournaments. So you have the OTP era Iron Open, OTP era Bronze Open, OTP era Silver Open, OTP era Gold Open, OTP era Diamond Open, OTP era Open, OTP era 1650 cap, so on and so forth. Now, what are the prizes looking like for this Perfect Team Championship Series? Well, let's start out with the 17th through 32nd place reward. What year does OTP era begin again? It is 1999 through the present. 
1999 through the present. So going to have a lot of modern era cards in this tournament. And it also can include live cards as well. So that's something to consider as well. All right. So 17th through 32nd place, we'll be getting this carry wood card from the 2003 chicago cubs 84 overall 137 stuff 103 pitcher babbitt a couple of big numbers right there movements looking pretty good on this has a fastball slider curveball combo on this 84 stamina 57 on the hold runners neutral ground ball fly ball tendency 94 to 96 miles an hour 2003 a really good year for the chicago cubs and a pretty good year for Kerry Wood as well. He went 14-11 with a 3.20 ERA, 11.3 strikeouts per nine, 4.3 walks per nine, and 266 strikeouts. He led MLB in both of those categories, strikeouts per nine and strikeouts as a whole. He also led MLB in hits per nine that year with six and a half hits per nine. That's pretty low for starting pitchers. But he also led Major League Baseball in hit-by-pitches. So that's why he kind of has a little bit of low control on here. 48 control, not exactly the greatest. He had 21 hit-by-pitches. He was a 2003 All-Star that year. And in the National League Championship Series, he hit the first home run by a pitcher in the NLCS since another Cubs pitcher did it, Rick Sutcliffe. Pretty cool stuff right there. So there's Kerry Wood, the 17th through 32nd place reward. 9th through 16th place reward. We're gonna go, we're gonna go a little bit. Um, we're gonna we're gonna have some interesting rewards for this particular tournament. And this is one of those interesting rewards that we're going to have. Ladies and gentlemen, your 9th through 16th place reward is going to be Negro League card Sam Bankhead. A shortstop with the Pittsburgh Crawfords. 91 Babbitt, 50 power, 74 Void K, 92 contact, 95 gap, and 62 I overall. This guy's calling card is speed and defense at the gold level. Plus, a lot of positional versatility. He can play second. He can play third. He can play short. He can play left. He can play center. And he's got some pretty good defensive ratings down there in the bottom left. 94 range in the infield, 94 error, 95 arm, and 94 on the turn double play. In the outfield, he's got 78 range, 72 error, 67 on the arm. In terms of speed stealing, base running, he's got 80 speed, 89 stealing, 92 base running with some pretty good bunting ability as well. Pretty decent contact hitter, this guy right here. Hit 333, 386, 450 with just one homer, 39 RBI, 16 doubles, and 77 hits during the 1936 season for the Crawfords. He was an East-West All-Star as well. He led the Negro Leagues in hits, doubles, and games played during the regular season. He was also known for having a pretty good arm in the outfield and the infield. So there's your 9th through 16th place reward, Sam Bankhead from the Pittsburgh Crawfords. We go to 5th through 8th place. 5th through 8th place reward, and oh boy, it's a pretty good one, especially if you're a fan of some Albatross contracts. Ladies and gentlemen, your 5th through 8th place reward is peak Anthony Rendon from the Washington Nationals. Very good BABIP, very good avoid K, very good contact, some power on this guy as well. Some very good um, splits against lefties here. Against lefties, he's got 93 BABIP, 85 power, 101 avoid K, 117 contact, 106 gap power, and 97 on the arm. He can play second and he can play third base. 85 range, 93 error, 100 arm, and 80 on the turn double play. Fully trained, by the way, at both second and third. Now, Anthony Rendon, very much famous for his uh, Washington Nationals career, infamous for his LA Angels career. Uh, 283, 367, 474 in his career so far, 158 homers, 657 RBI. 
He was a 2019 All-Star, finished top 10 in MVP four times, and he won Silver Slugger twice. He led the National League in doubles twice in 2018 and 2019, and led MLB in RBI in 2019. Now, obviously, y'all know what uh, <laughs> how he did when he moved to LA. 34 homers in 2019, and then from 2020 to 2023, he has only hit 22 homers for the Angels in total. To say that's not great is an understatement. <laughs> he also has a top five salary this year, which is uh, something else. Um, English proficiency is uh, comes separately. So there you go. Anthony Rendon from the Washington Nationals is in. Perfect team 24. All right. As for... Our third and fourth place reward. This is a very interesting card right here. Oh, boy. Oh, why are we dropping frames? Why are we dropping frames? There we go. There we go. Now we're back. Now we're back. All right. Our third and fourth place reward for the sixth Perfect Team Championship Series. It's a very interesting card right here. It is 99 overall. Joe Gordon. From the 1942 New York Yankees. 1942 Joe Gordon from the New York Yankees. 113 BABIP, 93 power, 30 avoid K, 95 contact, 95 gap, and 89 on the eye. This is a very interesting bat here. He's going to strike out a lot. But man, when he gets contact with the ball, it is absolutely incredible. Plus, he's got some incredible defense over at second base. 101 range, 65 error, 93 arm, and 102 on the turn double play. This is a wild card right here, right? This this card right here. This, I, I could definitely see myself... Possibly having some fun with this card. I can see myself having some fun with this card. Against righties, he's got 115 BABIP, 94 power, 28 avoid K, 96 contact, 97 gap, 88 on the eye. Very interesting one right here. Uh, Joe Gordon's 1942 season, though, was very excellent. 322, 409, 491 with 18 homers, 103 RBI, and a 155 OPS plus he was the 1942 American League MVP he made his fourth all-star game during this year his 365 BABIP on the 1942 season was the highest of the 1940s among all second basemen in Major League Baseball which is just absolutely incredible right there however he also led MLB in strikeouts that year with 95 of them, which doesn't seem like a high number today, but that was a high number back in the 1940s. And he also had 7.7 .7 war during this year, the highest of his career. Now, a lot of people say Joe Gordon stole the MVP from Ted Williams that year. I mean, you could definitely make that case. There you go. <laughs> Joe Gordon, 1942, New York Yankee in Perfect Team 24 as your third and fourth place reward for the sixth PTCS. Let's go to the second place reward. And for y'all draft nuts out there, ladies and gentlemen, I think this is the first time we've ever done this for a Perfect Team Championship Series. We have a future legend card as the second place reward for this perfect team championship series. And for you LSU Tiger fans out there, it is 100 overall, Dylan Cruz from the Washington Nationals, your second place reward for the PTCS. 110 BABIP, 98 power, 107 avoid K, 139 contact, 95 gap, and 92 on the eye. This is a banger of a hitter right here. 
against lefties. He's got 113 BABIP, 101 power, 109 avoid K, 144 contact, 98 gap, and 96 I. Defensively, 103 range, 102 error, 92 on the arm. Ooh, boy. And he's got a little bit of speed on him. 72 speed, 83 stealing, 93 on the base running. Holy shnikes indeed. <laughs> this is a fun card right here. And let me tell you, Dylan Cruz had a pretty good first year in minor league baseball in just 35 games. 35 games, 292, 377, 467 with five homers, 29 RBI. He is the number one prospect in the Washington Nationals organization. He is number four overall right now, according to MLB.com. He was picked number two overall, as you all know, in the 2023 MLB draft out of Louisiana State University. And he led LSU to win the College World Series, just a few months ago, this year, in 2023. Pretty cool stuff right there. Dylan Cruz, 2023 future legend, your second place reward in PTCS number six. All right, your champion card for the sixth perfect team championship series. Now, if you go back and look, and what the format was, OTP era, 2003 run environment, Wrigley Field, Chicago. You might have an inkling as to who this might be, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, your PTCS number six champion reward, the best pitcher that the Chicago Cubs had in their rotation in 2003. It is 100 overall right-handed starter mark Pryor. mark Pryor, 132 stuff 115 movement 105 homer rating 102 pitcher babbitt 100 on the control he's got a little tiny bit of reverse splits right here 132 stuff against lefties 118 movement 107 homer 102 pitcher babbitt 98 control Against righties, 132 stuff, 113 movement, 103 homer rating, 102 pitcher Babbitt, 102 control. 96 stamina, 91 on the hold runners. He's got a fastball, slider, curveball, and changeup combo right here. Mark Pryor's 2003 season was the stuff of legend, and it sucks that he didn't really have as great of a career as you know we would all think he would have had now you might have you might attribute it to either dusty baker the inverted w all that good stuff oh man but 2003 went 18 and 6 with a 243 era 10.4 strikeouts per nine 2.1 walks per nine 179 era plus he was an all-star that year, third in National League Cy Young voting, ninth in National League MVP. He led the NL in FIP that year, as well as wins above replacement, and led the Cubs in wins in ERA as well. He also won Game 2 of the 2003 NLCS, but as y'all probably know, he was, on, I believe he was on the mound for that uh, fateful Game six, which you all know exactly what happened. So, there you go. Your PTCS number six champion reward, Mark Pryor from the Chicago Cubs. That'll be a fun, fun thing to win right there. So, good luck to everybody that's going to be p participating in the PTCS. By the way... I might actually be in a PTCS this year. How cool would that be? All right. couple more pieces of news and notes for y'all. The last live update for 2023 Major League Baseball live cards here in Perfect Team 24 
is going to take place on Monday, October 9th. October 9th, which is going to be a little bit after the season ends. So that we can get everything compiled and all that. And so you can get uh, those last live updates. It'll be the last live update for the cycle, October 9th. And also, for Perfect Team Live, if you're playing Perfect Team Live, we will have PT Live for the playoffs and the daily point total rewards and weekly payout rewards will be doubled for the playoffs. That sounds pretty good, don't you think? Awesome, awesome stuff. <laughs> yep, weekly payouts and daily point total rewards double for the playoffs. That's going to be pretty fun right there. All right, folks. Well, well, since we have some top stuff coming up, you know, I, I love, I love looking at stats. And, you know, Perfect Team Live, you know, also deals with stats a lot. And so maybe you can use this particular tool to help you create those PT Live rosters. Stat Head Baseball, powered by Baseball Reference. And you can use code 23OOTP25 for $25 off an annual baseball or all sports subscription. That's right. You can save $25 off right now. By the way, today only, today only, Steadhead is free for everybody right now. Free preview of Steadhead going on right now. So that's, that's, some pre that's pretty good stuff right there. But if you like it after this day, you know, you can save $25 off an annual subscription. That's a win-win if you ask me. This offer expires on December 31st, 2023. $25 off an annual baseball or all sport subscription. Stathead Baseball, powered by Baseball Reference. Alrighty, so let's get to the meat and potatoes of today. The fifth set of of tops cards right here now here's how this is going to work today all right there's going to be cards at every single level that will be going toward a mission that will get you a tops card as a reward so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a couple of the cards that are going to be in the mission to get the particular tops card and then we'll show you the tops card that comes with that mission. So, I'm going to show a couple of regular packable cards. And then we're going to show you the tops card that goes along with it. So, let's go ahead and get this thing started and we're going to go out to the we're going to go out to out west for our first card of the day. So, you got like iron, bronze, silver, gold and diamond for each of our tops cards they're going to be in a mission that will get you the tops card so let's go out west for our first card of the day and we will have from the oakland athletics 50 overall iron first baseman matt olson matt olson a rookie sensation card from the 2017 Oakland Athletics, 48 BABIP, 101 power, 44 avoid K, 66 contact, 35 gap, and 72 on the eye. A little bit better against righties with the 107 power, 52 BABIP, 44 avoid K, 72 contact, 74 on the eye. Big power for an iron. Big, big power for an iron. Defensively. Over at first base, pretty good. He's pretty tall over there as well. 52 range, 53 error, 56 arm, and 60 on the turn. Double play has a little bit of outfield eligibility as well. <clears throat> 2017, Matt Olson's rookie season hit 259, 352, 651 with 24 home runs, 45 RBI, and a 166 OPS+. Now, Matt Olson finished fourth in the 2017 American League 
Rookie of the Year voting. Finished tied for second among American League rookies in home runs during this season. 24 of them, you know, in 2017, obviously was the year of Aaron Judge. So nobody was going to catch him in terms of rookies. <laughs> uh, Matt Olson also hit 13 home runs for the A's during the month of September, setting a rookie record in that category. Pretty cool stuff right there for 2017. Matt Olson from the 2017 Oakland A's. Rookie sensation card in. Perfect team, 24. All right, so there's, there's, a nice, there's a nice looking iron card right there. Let's take a look at another card that you're going to get in this, par in this particular mission to get the tops card that's coming in a couple of cards here. So the next card that goes in this particular mission is a diamond card and comes to us from the Houston Astros it is a peak card. And ladies and gentlemen, that guy is 93 overall, Daryl Kyle from the Houston Astros. 87 stuff, 103 movement, 97 homer rating, 85 pitcher Babbitt, and 74 control. It's got a little bit of reverse splits on him as a right-handed pitcher. 89 stuff, 100 movement, 94 homer rating, 87 pitcher Babbitt, 72 control against lefties 88 stamina 87 on the hold runners he's got fastball curveball changeup combo Ch curveball really the really the only good pitch that he really has on him i mean he was known for his curveball big time in daryl kyle's career from 1991 to 2002 went 133 and 119 with a 412 era and a 104 ERA plus. He was a three-time All-Star, top five Cy Young Award winner twice in his career. Led the National League though in hit by pitches a couple of times, so the control not really quite there for his entire career, but he did have a little bit of control um, in other years, obviously. He also won double-digit games six times in his career, including 20 games at one point for the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, Daryl Kyle. Yeah, that was the uh, 2000 season for St. Louis where he went 20 and nine with a 391 ERA after a couple of disastrous seasons when the Colorado Rockies tried him out as a pitcher. And well, we all know what uh, pre-Humidor Coors was like um, if you really think about it. He also pitched a no-hitter on September 8th, 1993 against the New York Mets. And as some of you already know, tragically uh, tragically passed away at the age of 33. Um, very, very, I guess a pretty big loss. Pretty big loss. Passing away in uh, June of 2002, actually, during the season. The first active major league player to pass away during the regular season since 1979, uh, Thurman Munson. <sighs> yeah, pretty much uh, passed away from a, I uh, believe, oh goodness, what? Hmm. Yeah, coronary artery stuff. Mm. But, yeah, and it sucked. It It sucked. But you know what? Daryl Kyle is a pretty good pitcher. Pretty darn good pitcher. This card's a good one. Daryl Kyle, 93 overall from the Houston Astros. In. Perfect team. 24. All right, folks. Well, so Matt Olson, first baseman, Daryl Kyle, Houston Astro. A couple of those cards are going to be in this mission to get this particular person. Now, when you think of the Houston Astros and you think of first baseman, I think there's only one guy that fits the bill for one heck of a tops card. Ladies and gentlemen, 
94 overall from the 1999 Houston Astros. It is 94 overall Jeff Bagwell as the mission reward for who else? The Jeff Bagwell Tops Mission. 82 Babip, 100 power, 69 avoid K, 102 contact, 94 gap power, 122 on the eye. Holy cats, that's a lot of eye. That's a lot of eye right there. Against lefties, these are some fantastic splits, by the way. 107 Babip, 95 power, 67 avoid K, 119 contact, 89 gap, and 120 on the eye. Very good defensively over at first base, 74 range, 72 error, 75 arm, and 84 on the turn double play, 82 speed, 86 stealing, 97 on the base running. Somehow managed to find a picture of him with a normal batting stance. A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> oh man, yeah, this, this is kind of looking like kind of right before he crouches down a little bit. <laughs> But, the, but you know, the card art, pretty darn cool on this one. 1999 season for Jeff Bagwell was a pretty good one. Not as good as like his MVP season in 1994, but this was very close to being an MVP year for Jeff Bagwell. He hit 304, 454, 591 with 42 homers, 126 RBI, and a 164 OPS+. Plus. Finished second. In National League MVP, he was also an all-star and a silver slugger during this particular year. Led Major League Baseball in walks that year with 149. Hence the, uh, hence the big I right there on this card. He also led MLB in runs scored and games played. He, had, he played in all 162 games for the Houston Astros during the 99 season. And this year, he also became the second player in Major League Baseball history to have a 40-homer, 30-stolen base season for the second time in his career. He had two 40-30 seasons, and 1999 was the second of those seasons. So, became only the second player to have that kind of a season. Pretty cool stuff right there. Jeff Bagwell, 1999 Houston Astro, in. Perfect team. 24. So there's a look at Jeff Bagwell, your tops mission reward card. Pretty cool stuff right there. All right, next up, let's go to another mission set that we have coming up for y'all. There's, there's five mission sets that we will have for y'all today on this for tops five. And let's start off this next this next mission set with a bronze card. So let's go down to bronze and we find from the 2017 Cincinnati Reds, right-handed starter Luis Castillo. 67 overall, right-handed starter, 89 stuff, 78 movement, 69 homer rating, 94 pitcher Babbitt, 64 on the control. Very good against righties. With the 93 stuff, 99 Babbitt, 69 stamina, and 67 on the hold runner. Extreme ground ball type. Extreme ground ball type. You don't usually see extreme ground ball type with this particular with this particular shape on this card. With the pitcher Babbitt being so high and the homer rating having a little bit of a lower side here. But that's pretty good stuff right there. 96 to 98 on the velocity. Fastball and changeup are his best pitches. He also got a slider and a sinker. Pretty cool stuff for this for this bronze card right here. This is a this is a pretty solid bronze card. Could be a pretty good play in the PTCS potentially if you make it. Maybe in the maybe in the bronze tournament. Hmm, something to something to think about. Something to think about. 2017 year for Luis Castillo. He went just three and seven. This was his rookie year that this year. Three and seven with a 3-1-2 ERA. Then again, he was pitching for the 2017 Cincinnati Reds, so he's kind of expecting to get, you know, quite a few losses here and there. 3-1-2 ERA. He had 9.9 .9 strikeouts per nine, 3.2 walks per nine, and a 144 
ERA plus. Pretty good stuff right there. Finished eighth in National League Rookie of the Year voting that year. Finished 10th among all rookies in strikeouts and a 1.075 whip, the second lowest of his career. He did this. He did this in just how many innings? He pitched just 89 innings during the 2017 year. 15 games started, 98 strikeouts in 89 innings pitched. Pretty good stuff right there. For Luis Castillo, 2017 Cincinnati Red, it, perfect team, 24. All right, next up, next up, let's go to the Marlins for our next card. And this guy might have a little bit of a uh, familiar sounding name to it. Because ladies and gentlemen, 86 overall peak second baseman from the Florida Marlins, guess what? It's Luis Castillo. No relation. No relation. 90 BABIP, 10 power, 94 void K, 91 contact, 57 gap power, and 87 on the eye. Very interesting splits against both lefties and righties here. Excuse me a second. There we go. Just had to cough a little bit there. Pretty good defense on this Luis Castillo card as well. 91 range, 88 error, 56 arm, and 89 on the turn. Double play. 92 speed, 85 stealing, 95 base running as well. Ooh, boy. Whoo. 21 power against lefties, just 7 power against righties. This guy hitting a home run is going to be friggin like uh <laughs> a miracle you know what i mean got 90 bab up against righties 88 against lefties uh better avoid k against lefties and better contact against lefties it's got some more gap power against lefties but more eye against righties pretty interesting stuff right there pretty interesting stuff Luis castillo you know he had a very solid career with the marlins played from 1996 to 2010 Hit 290, 368, 351. Yeah, you, you can always tell this guy was not a power hitter because of uh, on-base percentage higher than slugging percentage. 28 home runs in his career, 443 RBI. He was a three-time All-Star for the Marlins, three-time Gold Glover, and won the 2003 World Series. The only guy who played for the Marlins on both of their championship teams. That was not traded the following offseason. <laughs> I mean, that 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 just shows that 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 has to be indicative of something. That has to be indicative of something. He's also the all-time leader in games played for the Marlins, 1,000. 128 games for the Marlins. He was a three-time All-Star, three-time Gold Glover. A led MLB in stolen bases twice in 2000 and 2002, the most. And also had the most stolen bases in Florida history. Florida Marlins history. Pretty cool stuff right there. 86 overall, Luis Castillo from the Florida Marlins. Now... The Marlins. Let's talk. Let's talk a little bit more about the Marlins for this particular tops card right here. Because when you think about some of the best hitters in Florida Marlins history, well, we could also say Miami Marlins history because this is a Miami Marlins card right here. Your tops mission reward for the mission that includes both of these Luis Castillos is 96 overall peak right fielder Giancarlo Stanton. Giancarlo Stanton from the Miami Marlins. 88 Babip, 127 power, 56 avoid K, 
109 contact, 99 gap power, and 92 on the eye. Look at the splits against lefties here, folks. 92 Babbitt, 139 power, 76 avoid K, 124 contact, 109 gap, and 99 on the eye. Whoo, boy. That, that's some big numbers against lefties right here. Against righties, he's got 86 Babbitt, 123 power, 49 avoid K, 104 contact, 95 gap, and 90 on the eye. Oh, man. He can play both left field and right field. He is fully trained in right field, partially trained in left. 87 range, 39 error, and 96 on the arm. So maybe not the best outfielder in the world. I mean, just give just given that error rating alone of 39. Whoo. Whoo. Oof. Oof. Ooh. 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 But he's got some range. He's got some arm. If you can live with the errors, if you can live with the errors, this is a very solid hitting card right here. 36 speed, 69 stealing, 48 base running as well. Giancarlo Stanton, as of yesterday, his career numbers, you know, pretty darn good. 259, 349, 529, 402 homers, 1,029 RBI. <clears throat> He was a 2017 National League MVP, five-time All-Star, and two-time Silver Slugger as well. He led the National League in homers twice in his career and led in slugging three times. He also hit 30 or more homers seven times in his career. Most recently, most recently, he did that 30 homer feat. Heck, just last year with the Yankees, despite, you know, hitting... 211 but still uh 59 homers in 2017 for Giancarlo as well that's a fun number right there 132 RBI as well that year that 2017 season for Stanton was just just absolutely bonkers just absolutely bonkers he also this year just this year became the fourth quickest player to hit 400 career home runs. Which, that's pretty darn cool. That's pretty darn cool. Fourth quickest player behind Mark McGuire, Babe Ruth, and Alex Rodriguez. And surpassed Albert Pujols to be the fourth quickest player. That's pretty cool stuff right there. Giancarlo Stanton, 96 overall from the Miami Marlins. Your top's mission reward for the Giancarlo Stanton collection. All right, let's go to the third mission set that we're going to have. And let's start out with a guy that you might know best as an oft-injured starting pitcher in Major League Baseball. But a lot of people forget that he was... A pretty darn good reliever the first couple of years of his career. Before he made the jump to the rotation. And broke so many strikeout records in Major League Baseball. Ladies and gentlemen, or at least has a record for the most Ks per nine of all time in Major League Baseball. Ladies and gentlemen, from the 2011 Chicago White Sox, it is 73 overall rookie sensation. Chris Sale. Chris Sale, 113 stuff, 105 movement, 97 homer rating, 92 pitcher Babbitt, 37 control. This is one hell of a silver card right here. This this is this is probably my favorite card of this set. This is probably my favorite card of this set. Just for the sheer stuff and babip of it all. However, the control is definitely an issue with this card. 42 control against lefties, 35 control against righties. But, honestly, I think that might outweigh 
Honestly, I think the positives here outweigh the negatives on this card. 124 stuff against lefties, 109 against righties, 101 pitcher BABIP against lefties versus 89 against righties. He's got fastball, slider, and changeup combo. Very good at holding runners as well with that 89 rating. He's a ground ball guy, 95 to 97. This, hmm, this could be probably one of the better lefty relievers that we might see maybe in a silver PTCS, maybe even gold PTCS, potentially. This is a fun pitcher right here. Very sneaky good card for 73 overall. 2011 for Chris Sale, 71 innings, 58 games, a 279 ERA, had 10 strikeouts per nine, 3.4 walks per nine this is the final year of chris sales career where he was a primary reliever and he had the second most strikeouts out of the white Sox bullpen behind some guy named sergio santos now he had plus 3.7 win percentage added which means you know he was pretty good in high leverage situations for the white Sox during 2011 this is the second highest number of his career plus 3.7 win percentage added and no chris sale he didn't really pitch much in the minor leagues before making it to the big leagues back in 2010 which i thought was just absolutely crazy back when he first came up so there you go chris sale from the 2011 chicago white Sox in perfect team 24 now speaking of the white Sox, speaking of the White Sox. They've had some pretty good power hitters recently as well. Especially in the last decade or so. And this next card is definitely one of them. Ladies and gentlemen, from the 2014 Chicago White Sox, it is 91 overall first baseman, Jose Abreu, 102 BABIP, 109 power, 60 avoid K, 116 contact, 94 gap, and 75 on the eye. Versus lefties, some pretty good stuff here, 112 BABIP, 117 power, 56 avoid K, 124 contact, 99 gap, and 82 on the eye. Very good numbers against both lefties and righties here. 99 BABIP, 106 power, 62 avoid K, 114 contact, 92 gap, 72 on the eye against righties. Defensively, not the greatest, but he definitely has some interesting ratings. 31 range, 54 error, 67 arm, 71 on the turn double play. 2014 season, this is Jose Abreu's rookie year for the Chicago White Sox. Technically rookie year since this is the first um, his first year in Major League Baseball after defecting from Cuba. 2014, he has a 317 average, 383 on base, 581 slugging, 36 home runs, 107 RBI, and a 173 OPS+. Plus. He won the 2014 American League Rookie of the Year, finished fourth in AL MVP. He was an all-star and a silver slugger as well. He also led Major League Baseball in slugging percentage and OPS+, plus, and he also set the record for most home runs in a single season by a White Sox rookie with that 36 number right there. So Jose Abreu, very good, powerful card for a low diamond. He could be a very interesting, uh, very interesting guy for your perfect team. Jose Abreu, 2014 Chicago White Sox in perfect team, 24. All right, so you have a pitcher from the White Sox. You have a first baseman from the White Sox. So you're probably thinking, well, the tops card has to be for a Chicago White Sox. And you know what? You would be correct on that assessment. <laughs> Your tops mission reward, which includes Jose Abreu and Chris Sale cards. Ladies and gentlemen, peak card 
from the Chicago White Sox. It is 100 overall left-handed starter Mark Burley. 62 stuff, 111 movement, 100 homer rating, 104 pitcher BABIP, 105 control. Oh, man. Oh, man. The speed runner himself, Mark Burley. And these are some very interesting splits here. Very interesting splits. 64 stuff. 114 movement, 102 homer rating, 108 pitcher BABIP, 110 control against lefties. And against righties, 61 stuff, 110 movement, 99 homer, 103 pitcher BABIP, 104 control, 97 stamina, 115 on the hold runners. 115. That has to be. The highest hold runners rating I think I've ever seen in this game. That is incredible. Absolutely incredible. Fastball, slider, curveball, changeup, and cutter combo on his pitching repertoire. But man, oh man, Mark Burley, you know, he had a solid career. A very underappreciated career. Very underappreciated career for the Chicago White Sox. From 2000 all the way up to 2015. They also had a few years with the Blue Jays in there, but we don't we don't talk about those Blue Jays years like at all. Uh 214 and 160 with a 381 ERA, a 117 ERA plus. He was a five-time all-star, four-time gold glove winner, won the 2005 World Series. Won the 2005 World Series. For the White Sox through 200 or more innings. This guy was just the epitome of consistency in his career. Through 200 innings in all but two seasons. His first year in the majors and his last year in the majors. Which uh, his last year in the majors, uh, he kind of got shelled in his last start. He needed to go one and two thirds innings more to make it to 200 innings. And he didn't do it. He got shelled and then got removed. And that kind of broke the streak there. So Mark Burley, you know, very, very good pitcher. And he also famously threw the 18th perfect game in MLB history on July 23rd, 2009 versus the Tampa Bay Rays. The Dwayne Wise catch still lives rent free in my head. <laughs> there we go mark burley tops mission reward for the mark burley tops collection in perfect team 24 all right we got a couple more missions to talk about here today let's talk about a couple of couple of cards that will go toward that particular mission and the first one oh man if you guys were around for Perfect Team 20 and Perfect Team 21, you will know how absolutely goated this guy was in Perfect Team for previous years. All right? Because this guy was the guy you had to have behind the plate for cap tournaments. Ladies and gentlemen, 68 overall from the 2019 Cleveland team Ladies and gentlemen, it is the catcher, Roberto Perez. Roberto Perez, 61 BABIP, 80 power, 47 avoid K, 69 contact, 32 gap, and 66 on the eye. But man, oh man, you're getting this guy for the catcher ability right here. 92 catcher ability, 108. On the catcher arm. This guy was an absolute defensive stud behind the plate. And and the thing is, with his stat layout right here, Roberto Perez is just one of two catchers in this entire game 
right now that that is a gold or a lower card with 90 or more catcher ability and 80 or more power on the card. 90 or more catcher ability, 80 or more power on the card. Just one of two catchers, gold or lower, with that stat combo right there. 2019, you know, you take a look at a high level here. 239 average. Okay, fine. Bleh, you know. 321 on base, 452 slugging. He had 24 homers. He had 24 homers during the regular season for Cleveland, which is just bonkers given that, you know, he never he has never hit like double digit homers since. <laughs> 63 RBI and a 99 OPS plus. He was a gold glove award winner at catcher. His defensive prowess just undeniable. 2.7 defensive wins above replacement. That was highest among all catchers in 2019. He also led the American League in caught stealing percentage as well. And this was his only season of his career with 100 or more games and double digit home runs. Pretty cool stuff right there. Roberto Perez, 2019 from Cleveland. Is it? Perfect team. 24. All right. So next card that is going to be in this mission. When you take a look at this card, you might get a little bit of a sense as to who the reward is going to be. Potentially, potentially. But you know, Cincinnati has had some great pitchers in their history. And this is one of them right here. Ladies and gentlemen, from the 1993 Cincinnati Reds, their ace of their staff that year, it is 98 overall, Jose Rio. Jose Rio from the Cincinnati Reds, 96 stuff, 99 movement, 91 homer rating, 92 pitcher babbitt, and 90 on the control this is this is a very solid stat layout right here 90s across the board overall against righties you got 101 stuff 96 movement 88 homer rating 96 pitcher babbit and 92 on the control against lefties he's not bad as well 91 stuff 102 movement 94 homer rating 87 pitcher babbit and 87 control this is, this is a solid layout here. This is a sneaky good card for a high diamond right here. Sneaky good card for a high diamond. Fastball, slider, forkball, and changeup on this guy. 1993 season for Jose Rio. Definitely one of the best that he's had in his career. 14-9 record, a 2.48 ERA, 7.9 strikeouts per nine, 2.2 walks per nine, and a 162 ERA plus. Excuse me, second. Sorry about that. Another cough there. But Jose Rio, fifth in Ed L. Cy Young voting in 1993, led MLB in starts with 36 of them. He also led the National League in strikeouts per nine and strikeouts that year. 227 strikeouts. With a 7.9 strikeouts per nine, he was an innings eater as well. And of course, during the 1993 season, he pitched a one-hitter against the expansion Colorado Rockies. Pretty cool stuff right there for Jose Rio, a very solid pitcher in Cincinnati history. He is in. Perfect team. 24. Now, we have a catcher card. We have a Cincinnati Reds card. So really, there is only one player that this mission reward could possibly be. I mean, it, it feels pretty obvious at this point, right? Ladies and gentlemen, peak card from the Cincinnati Reds. It is 100 
overall catcher, Johnny Bench. Johnny Bench, 71 BABIP, 129 power, 64 avoid K, 101 contact, 100 gap, and 89 on the eye. Excuse me, second. Whoo, buddy. 102 catcher ability, 103 catcher arm as well. And this card art, this definitely goes hard right here. Holy cats. Probably one of the best catchers in history of baseball. Just all around hitting and defense right here. Against lefties, he's got 139 power, 102 contact, 103 gap, 102 eye. Against righties, he's got 126 power. So he's got power against both sides right here. He can play catcher. He can also play first base. He can also play third. A little bit of left field and a little bit of right field as well. This is an interesting one right here. But he's got 102 catcher ability and 103 catcher arm. That is huge right there. Some huge stuff. This is a guy that has power and has some good catcher ability right here. Very, very fun stuff right here. Big power against both lefties and righties. Not a lot of speed either. Johnny Bench's career from 1967 to 1983 hit 267, 342, 476 with 389 homers, 1,376 RBI. He was a two-time MVP, 14-time All-Star, and a 10-time Gold Glove winner. He hit 45 homers in the 1970 season, which was the most ever by a catcher until Salvador Perez broke that record in 2021 when he hit uh, 47 home runs. Which, that was that was an incredible... 48 homers, my apologies. He also caught 43% of people trying to steal in his career. That's that way high up there. And he led the National League in caught stealing percentage three times in his career. So there you go. Johnny Bench, peak card from the Cincinnati Reds. He is in. Perfect team. 23. Alrighty. One more mission to talk about. <clears throat> One more mission to talk about here today. And let's go to the Midwest of the country. And we go to the great state of Missouri for this one. And we go to some of those Kansas City Royals teams of the mid-2010s. And we bring to you the center fielder, one of the linchpins for this particular squad. Ladies and gentlemen, 84 overall center fielder from the 2015 Kansas City Royals. It is Lorenzo Kane. 87 Babbitt, 62 power, 73 avoid K, 92 contact, 79 gap, and 51 on the eye. This is a very splitty card right here. 92 Babbitt, 80 power, 75 avoid K, 104 contact, 94 gap, and 50 eye against lefties. So this guy is very good against lefties. Maybe not exactly against righties. <clears throat> However, he can play a pretty mean center field and a decent right field as well. He's got a little training out there in right field. 105 range, 47 errors, 67 on the arm. So the error rating a little bit low on this, but the range is absolutely elite for this guy. He's got a little bit of an arm at 67 there. Speed stealing and base running pretty good as well. 89 speed, 98 stealing, and 106 on the base running. 2015 season for Lorenzo Kane, a very solid one. <clears throat> a very, very solid one. 
307 average, 361 on base, 477 slugging, 16 homers, 72 RBI, and a 125 OPS+. plus. He finished third in the American League MVP vote, and he was an all-star during that year. He finished second, finished with the second highest average of his career at 307 and the most homers and RBI of his career. Now, <clears throat> we want to talk about the splits a little bit. Here's why it's a little bit splitty on this card. He had a 959 OPS against lefties during this season. Compare that to his righty stats, just a 778 OPS. So pretty big discrepancy there for Lorenzo Cain against lefties and righties. But there you go. This guy can get to everything in the outfield. This guy has some speed. Got a little bit of good contact against lefties here. So you probably have a little bit of... Probably a little, probably a little bit of a platoon guy here on our hands. But either way, Lorenzo Kane from the 2015 Kansas City Royals is in. Perfect team. 24. All right. Next up, you know what? Let's stay in Kansas City for our next card. And let me tell you, folks... <clears throat> If you love defense, all right, if you have a team that absolutely loves defense, and you can get some ground balls, this guy is going to be a great guy to have in the back end of your bullpen to try to save some games. Because ladies and gentlemen, is the submarine specialist himself one of the most famous relievers and of the 1980s it is 98 overall from the 1983 kansas city royals dan quisenberry dan quisenberry 33 stuff but 121 movement 108 homer rating 107 pitcher babbitt and 123 control. These are some fun splits right here, folks. These are some fun splits. Extreme ground ball type, by the way. 38 stuff against righties. 124 movement. 109 homer rating. 121 pitcher Babip. 121 pitcher Babip. This is a very interesting card for a high diamond reliever. <clears throat> very interesting card here. He also has 128 control against righties. He also has 33 stamina because, you know, he pitched quite a few innings in 1983. 139 of them, to be exact. 69 games, a 194 ERA, 45 saves, and 3.1 strikeouts per nine during the 1983 season. Curveball, sinker, knuckleball, and knuckle curve combo in his repertoire. He finished second in American League Cy Young voting during the 1983 season. Sixth in AL MVP, which, well, it was Cy Young and MVP voting in the 1980s. So, they love closers, I guess, in the 1980s. But they didn't love Dave Steeb for some reason. Sixth in AL MVP, he was an all-star. During the 1983 season, he led Major League Baseball in saves and games finished. He had 62 games finished, 45 saves. That 45 save mark was actually the single season record for saves at the time. Until I believe it was... Was it Dave Rigetti that broke that one? Or was it someone else? <clears throat> Who was it? Who was it? Nineteen eighty-three. Okay, it was tied in nineteen eighty-four by Bruce Souter and broken in nineteen eighty-six by Dave Rigetti. Okay, that's what I wanted. Yep, Rigetti had forty-six in nineteen eighty-six, so that forty-five saves was the record for a few years. Pretty, pretty good stuff. Right there. Even though he doesn't have really good stuff, he's got good movement, good babbit, good control. He'll be a, he'll, he might be a fun.
fun uh, fun guy to maybe have on your bullpen. You know, try to get a good ground ball. He only throws A5 to A7, so he's not going to blow people away either. I would love to see... I would love to see someone try this on a perfect league roster, to be quite honest. Just given the BABIP, given the control, given the movement. I would love to see how this plays in a perfect league setting. I really do. I really do. So there you go. Dan Quisenberry from the 1983 Kansas City Royals is in. Perfect team, 24. All right. So we have a couple of Royals. And you know, just like the Mark Burley collection, we're going to have a Kansas City Royal as our tops mission reward with those with the last couple of cards Quisenberry and Kane as part of the mission ladies and gentlemen there's only one really famous Kansas City Royal that could be a tops mission reward with these two guys in it ladies and gentlemen it is a peak card from the Kansas City Royals third baseman 100 overall George Brett 119 BABIP 86 power 115 avoid K 148 contact 121 gap and 115 on the eye look at the splits against righties right up there Holy cats. 125 BABIP, 88 power, 120 avoid K, 160 contact, 160 contact. Ah! 124 gap and 121 on the eye. Who knows? He can play third. He can play some first base as well. 88 range, 81 error, 93 arm, and 88 on the turn double play. Obviously, with a George Brett card, you're going to get some splittiness here because he was always, like, not as great against lefties than he was against righties. But, man, oh, man, if you put this guy in front of a righty, he is going to mash. He is going to mash right here. And you know, George Brett did a little mashing in his career at the plate. 305, 369, 487 on the slash line. 317 home runs. 1,596 RBI. He was the 1980 American League MVP. 13-time All-Star. 3-time Silver Slugger and the 1985 Gold Glove winner. He won the batting title three times in his career, the only guy to win batting titles in three different decades, 1976, 1980, and 1990. And he's only one of five players in Major League Baseball history. This is how good he was, folks. With 3,000 hits, 300 average, and a 300 homers. That is some fun stuff right there. George Brett, probably one of the best right-handed bats, well, probably versus right-hand bats that we have in the game. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Kansas City Royals, George Brett, your George Brett tops mission reward in Perfect Team 24. So there you go. There's all five missions for the tops cards, let's take a look at some of the other folks that are in today's set. There are 28 packable cards in total for this. So we got Matt Carpenter, we got Jim Rice, Elston Howard, Johnny Callison, Al Leiter, Carl Everett, Johnny Vandermeer, Pedro Guerrero, Corey Seager, Ryan Braun, Josh Hamilton, Cliff Lee. By the way, that Cliff Lee card very fun card. Definitely take a look at that one. That was the last one that was left on the cutting room floor. Scott Brocious, Johan Santana, Jerry Hairston Jr., Floyd Yeomans, and Carlos Zambrano. All packable cards in the set. 
all of them going toward these tops missions that you will be seeing just after the stream today. So there you go. Your five tops toppers for today. Jeff Bagwell, Giancarlo Stanton, Johnny Bench, George Brett, Mark Burley, all in Perfect Team 24. Fun stuff right here, folks. Ooh, boy. Have fun. Have fun looking for these cards. Because this is gonna be this is gonna be some good stuff right here. Alright, before. Before we head on off for the evening, let's take a look and congratulate our weekly leaderboard champs for week 25 for PTCS 6 period week number 3 from September 18th through the 24th. We have M the Bow as the winner over in Daily Iron with 112 points. Daily Bronze, it was Barbecue and the Rensselaerswick Patroons with 86 points. Daily Silver, Go Cubs Go in the Webster Grove Supercells with 131 points. Daily Gold, it was Lydora in the Midgar Materia taking home first place on the weekly leaderboard with 130 points. Daily Diamond, it was Metadurn and the Straw Hats with 103 points. By the way, I've been watching the One Piece live action on Netflix with a few friends. Very good. I've never seen One Piece before this. Daily Open, Ace Rutherford in the North Forest Moose with 91 points. Daily Wildcard, Moonlight Matt in the Cleveland Flying G's with 135 points. Weekly Tournaments, it had to go to a tiebreaker. It was KC86 in the Mississauga Leaf Tours with 171 points in Weekly Tournaments last week. Absolutely incredible point total there. Perfect Draft Daily, Bahoot! And the California Halos last week was on top with 136 points. Perfect Draft Weekly, KJ22 and the Conus Lituanica Green taking first place with 66 points. So congratulations to our weekly leaderboard champions and thank you for watching today's episode of This Week in Perfect Team for our fifth tops set of the year. Very fun stuff here today. Good luck finding the cards. Have fun today. I will see you back here on Sunday for the Perfect League World Series. Have a great day, everybody. Dish F34, Rob Tomlinson, signing out. Have a great rest of your day, everybody.